Sutra. To those who slander, he says that being tongueless and having cankerous mouths will be the retribution. To the hateful, he says that being ugly and crippled will be the retribution. To the stingy, he says that not getting what they seek will be the retribution. To gluttons, he says that hunger, thirst, and sicknesses of the throat will be the retribution. To hunters, he says that a frightening insanity that destroys one's life will be the retribution. To those who oppose their parents, he says that being killed in natural disasters will be the retribution. To arsonists who burn mountains and forests, he says that trying to take their own lives in the confusion of insanity will be the retribution. Commentary To those who slander the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, he, Earth Star Bodhisattva, says that being tongueless and having cankerous mouths will be the retribution. He says, You always speak nonsense in this lifetime, slander individuals and the triple jewel, grieving the triple jewel. In your future life, you will have no tongue and be unable to speak. In your future life, you will always have flaws on your mouth. You will face the retribution of incurable flaws. Why are people mute? It is because they slander the triple jewel. How come that person has a lot of canker flaws in his mouth, on his mouth that never quite heal? The reason why miracle doctors cannot heal him because he slandered the triple jewel in past lives. Hence, he faces the retribution of no tongue and canker force in the mouth. To the hateful, who have the biggest temper, who get angry easily and repeat with qualities typical, typical of Asuras, he says that being ugly and crippled will be the retribution. When people get angry, they get red in the face, thick in the neck, and go out with their eyes. Then they do not look too good. If they were that way, they will be very ugly in future lives. Why? Since they enjoy being that way in past lives, they will look especially ugly in this lifetime. They may be disabled, such as experiencing incon inconveniences in urination or crippled. This is a type of illness. If you get upset often, you will be ugly, disabled, and entangled by numerous illnesses in future lives. So the stingy who are not willing to give even a coin, turning and twisting that coin so that it becomes liquid, they are still unwilling to let it out of their hand. Stingy people are mis misery and unwilling to give, refusing to let go of the money they grab onto. He, a star bodhisattva, says that not getting what they seek will be the retribution. They will not have any of their wishes come true. To gluttons who want to eat non-stop, eating repeatedly without restraint, to people who eat without constraint, who do nothing but think about food all day. They eat, then sleep, sleep, then eat. A story that by tells people who do not restrain their food intake. He says that hunger, thirst, and sicknesses of the throat will be the retribution. Eat repeatedly now and in future lives that you will never be full. You may not even get a drink of water when you want it. Why? It is because your throat will download some sickness so that it cannot swallow. You may want to eat but you cannot swallow it, including water. This is the retribution of hunger, thirst and sickness of the throat. To hunters, he says that a frightening insanity that destroys one's life will be the retribution. Why do hunters hunt? They think it is fun. 
Here comes a deer, so bang, they shoot it at the deer, lies there dead. They only think, oh, see how my shot is so precise. I shot it dead with one bullet. They are pleased with themselves uh, for being so indulgent, unruly, unrestrained, and can do whatever they want. What should be said to hunters who indulge in their designs? Explain to them that since you killed in the future, you will experience a frightening insanity, some accidental death, such as a car accident, plane crash, train wreck, bus accident, and others. If you kill someone now, you will be killed by a car in the future. Explain this kind of cause and effect to them, and they may, may think. Oh, that is very dangerous. They will quit hunting. A storm design by explains the appropriate dharma for people. If you remember the retributions for this cause and effect, you will be able to explain the dharma for anyone who you encounter. You are um, then a transformation of a storm design by a storm design by is your partner to your firm. So after listening to the Earth Star Sutra, we understand the retribution in cause and effect and should avoid doing anything wrong. To those who oppose their parents by being unfilial, beating and scolding, he says that being killed in natural disasters will be the retribution. We cannot you cannot be unfilial to your parents because the universe will destroy you, such as death by a thunderbolt, by a falling tree knocked down in a windstorm, or by a falling tree, or by a collapsing house. These are retributions of death due to natural disasters. People who are not filial face the retribution of being hit by a thunderbolt, windstorm, or rain that washes down your house and crushes you. To arsonists who burn mountains and forests because they enjoy setting white fires, he says that trying to take their own lives in the confusion of insanity will be the retribution. Do not set fire to burn down any mountain because in future light, you will go insane and die. Explain these different distributions to him. A story Sattva teaches living beings everywhere, explaining the principle of cause and effect. Sutra to cruel parents or step parents, he says that being flogged in future lives will be the retribution. To those who net and trap young animals, he says that being separated from one's own children will be the retribution. To those who slander the triple jewel, he says that being blind, deaf, or mute will be the retribution. To those who slight the drama and regard the teachings with ignorance, with arrogance, he says that remaining in the bad paths forever will be the retribution. To those who destroy, or misuse of possessions uh, of the eternally dwelling. He says that revolving in the hells of 400 sub millions of years will be the retribution to those who defy the pure conduct of others and their false witness against members of the Sangha. He says that remaining in the animal realm forever will be the retribution to those who scald, burn, behead, men or otherwise harm beings, he says that undergoing the very same suffering will be the retribution. Commentary to cruel parents or step-parents. Either real dad and step-mom, real mom and step-dad, step-dad and mom, or real dad and mom who have a favorite. Darshan of China, for example, had his real father and a stepmother. There are also real mothers and stepfathers. Someone's father dies, and the mother remarries someone who becomes the stepfather. The stepdad may have favorites, preferring this child 
and the painting that tried Ming Siwuxian of China, for instance, is one of Confucius' students. His father was an official who remarried. The stepmother abused Ming Siwuxian in cold places during the winter. She put reed pots in Ming Siwuxian's padded jacket. For her real sons, he padded their jackets with cotton. Reed is fluffy and not warm enough. Only cotton can isolate chills and prevent cold. One day, official Ming, the father of Ming Siwuxian, was going somewhere and told Ming Siwuxian to steer the carriage. It was so cold that he trembled. Official Ming got upset. What is the matter with you? The weather is not even too cold. How can you be freezing the way you are? He picks up a whip and smacks him, which ripped his jacket. He took a look and saw that the padding was made entirely of reed parts. The father started crying, saying, I have so wronged my son. He is so cold because his stepmother treats him like this. He saw, saw that he will get rid of his wife. When he got home, he was going to divorce his wife, but Ming Siwuxian knelt down before his mother. He said, please do not get rid of my stepmother. The father asked, why? He said, one son alone bears the cold when the mother is around. Two sons have the chills with the mother gone. He says that he is the only one who bears the cold when his stepmother is around. But if his stepmother were to leave and remarry another, then two sons, stepbrothers, will both suffer the cold. His father thought it over and did not ask his wife to leave. The stepmother was moved by Ming Siwuxian's words and thought, My son is so considerate. She treated him impartially without discriminating against him in the future. Why are there people with step parents? Perhaps their father passed away and their mother remarried. Perhaps their real mother dies and the stepfather remarries. Children in this situation usually suffer a great deal. I do not know whether this occurs in America or not. This occurs frequently in China. In general, parents usually do not love children who are not related to them by blood. They may be extremely vicious toward them. This is some of what it means by cruel parents or step parents. He, both Stormy Sadba, says that being flogged in future lives will be the retribution. What kind of cause and effect it does? He said to his pupil, he tells them in future lives, they will face the retribution of being whipped and beaten. To those who net and trap young animals, such as newborn or baby fish, sparrows, and other creatures, he says that being separated from one's own children will be the retribution. Do things like this, and in future lives, you will separate from your family. You encounter situations where you cannot be together. You may have to go far away from your hometown so that not everyone can see each other. This is the retribution of being apart from your children. To so those who formerly spent the trip of the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, he says that being blind, deaf, or mute will be the retribution. You do not need to ask, and yet you can tell that blind, deaf, and mute individuals slandered the trip Bajua in their past lives since they made this eons ago. You will fall into the house if you slander the trip Bajua. Once you fall into the house, you will not be able to get out of it until billions and billions of eons later. Once you leave the house and before you become a human being, who knows how many lifetimes you would have to be an animal? How many years that you would have to be a horse, a cow, a sheep, a chicken, a dog, or a pig as a human being? You will be poor 
of a low-class blind deaf or mute as a result of having slandered the triple jewel. To those who slight the drama and regard the teaching is with the earlier games. Those who look down on the Buddha Dharma and are conceited toward Buddhism, who says that remaining in the bad paths forever will be the retribution. To those who destroy or misuse possessions of the eternal dwelling of the temple, perhaps you ruin a piece of paper or a piece of wood for no reason. In general, to those who damage the temple's communal goods, who says that revolving in the house for hundreds of millions of years will be the retribution. To those who defy the pure conduct of others and their false witness against members of the Sangha, refers to those who ruins, ruin others' Brahma conduct, the purity in cultivation, and those who commit rebel. This monk did not steal what they say, I saw him steal. This monk did not kill what they say, I saw him kill. Or, I saw him eat meat, I saw him drink somewhere, I saw him fooling around with the women somewhere. They badmouthed this monk for no good reason. To those who stand with false accusations, he says that remaining in the animal realm forever will be the retribution. This kind of people will fall into the hell in the future and be an animal forever after they leave the house. Shakyamuni Buddha told the four heavenly things that to those who scald, burn, behead, maim, or otherwise harm doing the he, a star bodhisattva says that undergoing the very same suffering will be the retribution. Scald people when with hard words and in future lives, you will be scalded, scalded with hard words too. Burn people with fire and people will burn you in the future too. Cut people with a knife and others will cut you with a knife in the future too. These are paybacks where the deaths are handed over back and forth. You kill someone, someone kills you. Someone kills you and you kill someone. He explains this kind of retribution that is uh, delivered back and forth. Sutra To those who violate precepts uh, and the regulations uh, of pure eating, he says that being born as birth uh, or beasts that must uh, suffer from hunger and thirst uh, will be the retribution. To those who make uh, unprincipled and uh, destructive use of things, he says that being unable to ever obtain what they seek will be the retribution. So the arrogant and haughty, he says that being severe and uh, of low station will be the retribution. To those who use backbiting to cause his part among others, he says that being tongueless or having speech impediments will be the retribution. To th those who deviant those with deviant views, he says that being reborn in backward regions will be the retribution. Commentary To those who violate precepts and the regulations of pure eating, people who receive the precepts should not break the precepts. They should observe the precepts. What does it mean by breaking the precepts? You transgress on purpose. It is okay if you did not know before and make mistakes. If you know and still make mistakes, then your offenses will be even more serious. You take another's life, so you received the precept against killing, so you break this precept. You still, so you received the precept against stealing, so you break this precept. You engage in sexual, uh, sexual conduct, so you receive the precept against committing sexual misconduct, so you break this precept. You lie, so you received the precept against lying, so you break this precept. You take intoxicants, so you receive the precept against taking intoxicants, so you break this precept. These are obvious transgressions that everyone knows, but transgressions also occur when people do not know about them. 
do appear not to make uh, any transgression so when you did transgressions that can be apparent to most people transgressions can also be unknown to most people nevertheless there are transgressions that according to the buddha drama the following are four scenarios of transgressions that do not appear to be transgressions one a bhikshu can adhere to the precepts completely except that he is uh, egoistic about keeping the precepts so there is still an eye about who receives the precepts so an eye who upholds the precepts so an, an eye who keeps and the keeps the precepts there is always a self which is an attachment although he did not violate the precepts he is not really keeping the precepts Keeping the precepts means that you do not feel you are better than other people because you keep the precepts. 2. He can recite and apply the sutras and nunaya, keeping the precepts completely. Obviously, he is separable from the view of his body. He does not talk about I, but talks about his body because he is attached to it. How? Is he attached to the body? He refuses to change his body. He refuses to change his own ways, such as being nice and lazy. He always works hard to make plans for his body. This is a view of the body. This is the second type of transgression that looks as if he is keeping the precepts and making no transgressions. 3. He practices the 12 Dudanga practices. Dudanga is a Sanskrit word that means uh, upbeat and energy, energetic. One is not sleepy or hungry. He strikes up his spirit to fight off loneliness. Sleepy, I'm going to sit here and meditate. Hungry, I'm going to avoid even water. This is how he practices the 12 Dutanga practices, but he does not know about the emptiness of people and the emptiness of Dharma. He feels that all Dharmas are existing. He has not reached the state of all Dharmas, um, empty of characteristics, but thinks that all Dharmas are existent. This appears to be keeping the precepts, but his skills of keeping the precepts are imperfect. 4. He is compassionate towards all beings. However, if he were to hear that all dhammas, all marks of dharma are fundamentally uncreated, that nothing comes into being in nothing cases, then he is frightened of the prospect of seeing this type of drama. The above four scenarios describe what appears to be no violation of precepts, but they are not adherences to the precepts either. Violate the reg regulations of pure eating, such as being a vegetarian, means eating meat. Not only is eating meat a violation of regulations of pure eating, but eating at the inappropriate times also violates the regulations of pure eating. What does it mean by eating at the inappropriate times? Eating after noon when you made a vow not to eat past noon is to eat at an inappropriate time. Eating at the inappropriate time is also a theft because you said that you would not eat after noon and you do. Having violated the precept of not stealing beyond the noon and the precept against stealing. When people ask you if you ate anything, you answer, you answer, oh, I did not. This violates the precept against lying. Also get that you violated three precepts. If someone gave you any food, this person also violates the same precepts and commits of the same offenses. 
This is why the Buddha said that they are not the Buddha's principles. They are not my disciples. What are people who break these precepts like? They are like a fish hawk that makes strange sounds or hungry ghosts that eat excrement because they have nothing to eat. People who break the precepts and the regulations of pure eating show themselves to be blazer of the lowest class. In the future, they will experience the retribution of being animals if a strong disciple encounters those who break the precepts and the regulations of pure eating. He says that being born as a bird or beast that must suffer from hunger and thirst will be the retribution. They will not have any food to eat.